Hi, my name is Duffy and Linkin Park is cooked. Most of you already know about their new singer, Emily Armstrong, former singer of Dead Sarah. Duffy forced me to listen to it, and to be fair, it sounds like something that'd be played at a rock radio or fast food restaurants. Not hating, but just not my things. But pre-exposed Emily were already hated by fans, saying how she will never replace Chester, which kind of gave me the same vibe as when Adam Gontier left Free Day Grace and they got Matt Walt as their new singer, and people were hating on him, saying how he will never be the same as Adam, which is quite stupid because both brought their own vibes to help shape the band. Same goes for pre-exposed Emily. They never said she's gonna replace Chester, but rather as a tribute for the band and Chester. She's here for Chester, not be Chester. However, I wasn't much aware until I saw this post. She's been exposed by Kedrick, singer of Mars Falta. By the way, give some support for his progressive rock band. They're so underrated. as a supporter and wrote a letter for Danny Masterson and a member of Scientology. Imagine seeing one who's done such bad things got invited for such big opportunity. Let's start with what is Scientology. They're a religion that blackmails members by making them confess in long recorded sessions, manipulate their lives to eat their wealth, extremely abusive practices towards children, isolates you from a loved ones. Even celebrities like Nicole Kidman lost her children to the cult. Katie Holmes had to make an escape to get her daughter out. Free labor is like having subgroups to signed contracts to work tirelessly for the group for 10k years. They can't handle criticism well and they'll also harass and target you if you leave. This cult is money sucking and pure wicked even avoiding taxes. Stuffy, we're gonna be over with this one, watch out. And numerous cases of- <coughs> Funny enough, Danny Masterson is a Scientologist. <laughs> Not only is this loser a member, he's also a convicted <laughs> for almost two decades, starting from 2000s, but was declared innocent until May 2023, where justice was served for the victims. And former That 70s Show star Danny Masterson is now at a state prison months after he was convicted. Of <laughs> he was admitted to North Kern State Prison. A Los Angeles jury convicted him back in May after he was charged. <laughs> Three women at his Hollywood Hills home between 2001 and 2003. He was sentenced to 30 years to life in prison. You can read more about him on this site, link in the description. Making more fans question and hate on her, so this is how she responded. Firstly, by posting on stories that will vanish after 24 hours. If one is truly apologetic about supporting a <coughs> and their victims, then they would make it into a post. Like how Cerdrick made a post exposing her. But nah, she's like, okay, I'll post it on a story that would definitely vanish so that everyone else can forget it afterwards. No one will forget forget these big deals, Emily. No one. But at least she gave a bit of effort for typing it out and addressing some of the rumors instead of leaving it hanging on her name since, you know, she's got a big opportunity to be in a very well-respected popular band. Her so-called apology letter, which only has 111 words, we are how she can address everything under 200 words, stating how she misjudged him while many victims have spoken and written about him for the past decades, but one early hearing could convince her to write a letter to support him, to help him declare innocent. Definitely not because he's a member of the cult, so you have to help him, or the cult has paid you to help him to cover it up. The letter ends with how she doesn't support abuse or violence, should be abuse nor violence. <laughs> Gosh, I hate this grammar cop side of me. And she empathizes the victim. She completely brushed off the Scientology allegations and her letter to Masterson. To me, if one brushes off certain allegations, then I would automatically assume that you're guilty of it. Because if you're not guilty of it, then you would have quickly denied it, right? Also, if you really empathizes your victims that were traumatized by your cult and your so-called ex-friend, then you would have addressed it. Because no, you don't want your life to get doxxed, harassed, or mentally abused. By the cult members like the survivors who are speaking against the cult and you because your parents work for OSA too, said Christy on this post. She mainly talked about how she swept off the Scientology allegation, how the cult has been ordering attacks on her and her family, including <coughs> her dogs in an evil way, ending it with you don't speak out because you're one of them. Shame on Linkin Park and two pleasant words. Soon Kedrick posted a long expose on Danny, the cult, and criticizing Linkin Park on how they choose her as a tribute. So I do 
recommend you pausing and reading the whole thing because I'm briefly going through it, mainly aiming at her for being a Scientologist, knowing well enough about Chester's past and things he had went through during his life before death through interviews and documentaries. I don't know if anybody out there can relate, but like, I have a hard time with life. Right. Sometimes it's great, but a lot of times for me, it's really hard. And no matter how I'm feeling, like I always find myself like struggling, find myself like stuck in like, a, in, like the same thing that keeps repeating over and over again. This place right here, this, this, this skull between my ears, that is a bad neighborhood. And I am, <laughs> I should not be in there alone. <laughs> I need. I can't be in there by myself. What are you talking about? It's just. You just. You just. It's uh, insane. Crazy, man. It's crazy in here. And then I was like, yeah, depressed, and and I was like, you know, drinking again, and then I was like, doing all this stuff, and I was just like, dude, like this is crazy. All my relationships were struggling. Like all my, everything was struggling. It was just really tough. I don't think it was burnt out from just like, man, like I just need a break. I was burnt out because I was just like Fuck the world. I even told one of my therapists at one point. I said. I just don't want to feel anything. I like, I like kind of envy sociopaths because they don't have to worry about ever feeling shit. And she's like, you mean you don't want to be a human being? I was like, yep, that's what I want. <laughs> Before the fire couldn't get any hotter, Chester's son, Jamie Bennington, posted his side of the story, exposing Mike and the dark side of Lincoln Park. First slide is Mike's Discord speech, saying how people will eventually get used to him being friends with Emily for years. Disrespect me and you will lose my respect in return. Lad, you're the one who said it and we're the ones who are doing it. Jamie said how Mike hired Emily despite knowing who she is, quietly erasing his father's legacy, the band's aspects and future during interviews, knowing his core fan base or support survivors of related stuff. The way he groomed fans, Chester, his family, and now betraying his fans. Again, I recommend you checking out this video. He did a deeper dive and the aftermath of what his son had to endure after voicing his opinions. And that's just the tip of Linkin Park's new era of controversies. Who knows there could be more people speaking up against Emily or Lincoln soon. Another crazy thing is, there's people who are defending Emily after all of this. I'm extremely confused. You're confused, I'm fucking confused. Confused, bro. Sometimes we really have to take off our idolizing glasses and understand who's who to blame instead of only looking at the surface. It's like you're saying you're a Nirvana fan or a Kurt Cobain fan, but you're homophobic or sexist. I just always felt that they weren't treated equally and, yeah. and uh, they weren't treated with respect, especially because of you know the way that um, Aberdeen treated women. I mean, just in general, you know, women are totally oppressed in yeah. small towns like that all over America. Yeah. If you're a sexist, racist, homophobe, or basically an asshole, don't buy this CD. I don't care if you like me. I hate you. Now, let's pretend we're in a universe where Emily is actually a nice and decent person. I actually do like her in the band. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? It's sort of a challenge for fans to stop sinking in the nostalgia and actually give this band a new way of breaking out again. People hate change because they fear what they aren't familiar with. Despite the EP being not my cuppa, I do wish it's done the best for the new Lincoln and for Chester's legacy. Okay, now the legend's over, where Emily is not a nice person and is a Scientologist. Come on now, dawg. Come on, man. She has no right to suffer in the band after knowing who she really is. Chester sang his heart out about his trauma in hopes that his music will make others who are suffering the same thing mentally or physically know that they're being acknowledged and they're as veiled as your average human being. I felt this way before, so insecure. Imagine being a fan who felt these lyrics from the bottom of your heart and seeing someone who's linked and supports the people that caused your yawn singing these lyrics. It's pure madness and irony. To help fans go through it as well. And now you're passing it on to someone who are linked with these evil things and as a tribute for Chester's legacy. A legacy that has helped people went through such trauma, but you're passing it to the people who are convicted of the trauma. This is like peak irony, I can't. However, we can't fully blame Emily after knowing that Mike was friends with her for years. Not just a day, not just a year, but years. 
But then, maybe it's their label or manager that wants her to be in the band. We didn't know what's behind cameras, do we can't fully blame anyone here yet. Imagine knowing your friend is friends with a supporter of your Cout on Cout trauma maker, I don't know how to say it but yeah, Duffy's right. That's like peak betrayal to Chester. I'm so sure Mike's staying silent until everything dies down so he could continue to promote the new Lincoln and acting like nothing has ever happened, continuing stepping on Chester's legacy. I'm not hating on Lincoln Park because of how they changed their music, nor Emily because of how she's replacing Chester, but rather who she really is. Even, even if you use the separate the art from artist card and using font from Booksum as an example, I could assure you that 70% of Booksum's listener actually supports the artist aka that walking red flag, 20% of only wanting to seem edgy, and 10% are actually ignorant enough to not know about Fark's beliefs. So thanks for watching, comment down below whether you still support Lincoln and Emily after all of this controversy. Don't forget to like and subscribe, I'll be posting more often nowadays. And I'm sorry, I won't support this new Linkin Park. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye!